Good morning, Syntax, and Merry Christmas. Welcome to a year in review video with me and Ms. Margaret. Tree wizard, tree wizard, tree wizard. I apologize for the change in lighting. I'm working with natural light here, so we get what we get. So for this video, I thought it would be fun to go through all the books that I've read for 2020 and kind of look back at this year that way. I hope you find this somewhat entertaining and uh, hopefully it will help you pick up your next book. All right, let's get started. So I'm introducing these books in roughly chronological order, depending on when I read it in the year. So one of the biggest reading achievements for myself this year is finally finishing the Harry Potter series. I started a year off with Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and I finished um, the rest of the books in the series. I'm really glad that I finally caught up with this modern classics. Uh, it's something that I wanted to do for a while now, and I'm glad that I finished in 2020. And um, not as glad that I experienced Harry's teenage angst with him in 2020. So moving right along, I also picked up Rhett and Link's book of Mythicality, A Field Guide to Curiosity, Creativity, and Tom Fullery. I listened to the audiobook version of this book. As a fan of Good Mythical Morning, I'm genuinely entertained um, by their performances in the audiobook. However, I didn't find myself super captured by their writing or their stories. Next up, during spring term this year, I read two books about invented languages for a linguistics class that I was TAing at the time. One of them is The Art of Language Invention, and the other one is In the Land of Invented Languages. Things that really helps me get through textbooks is uh, if they don't read like textbooks. These two books are perfect examples of books that are assigned by a class, but it doesn't super read as a textbook. They are both really interesting standalone books that I think myself as a language nerd would pick up uh, even without taking this class. So. so I, like a lot of people have during the lockdown, read some pandemic related books. First one that I read under this genre is Station Eleven. This is actually a reread. The first time I read it was like in 2017, 2018 maybe. And reading this book this year really helps me to put some of the story into context and I think really helped me connect it with the book in a different way. The next pandemic book that I read this year is called The Dreamers. A few people from our friend circle has read it, and everyone that I've talked to have enjoyed it. So, if you haven't read it, I would highly recommend. Even on a college campus though, some parts of the book hits a little bit too close to home for me, but I would still recommend the book. In a similar vibe, but not exactly a pandemic book, I also read My Year of Rest and Relaxation. Yeah, I think you read this book first and we talked about it, but this book really has a super unusual plot and I was very surprised by it the first time that I read it. Moving away from pandemic books, this summer I also read So You Want to Talk About Race, and I finished the graphic novel adaptation of the Adventure Zone podcast, the D&D podcast, um, Murder on the Rockport Limited. I borrowed this graphic novel from Dan in 2019 and finally finished it in 2020 and shipped it back to her. Before the summer finished, I also picked up Hank's new book, A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor. I also reread An Absolutely Remarkable Thing just to catch up. I didn't expect to like these two books so much, but I ended up absolutely loving it to bits. I find Hank's thoughtful observation about this internet age that we're all living in so interesting and so thought-provoking. And I think through his stories, Hank did a really good job telling us how um, amazing it can be to connect to other people through the internet and how enriching it can be to a person's life, but simultaneously how harmful the attention economy is right now and how social media can destroy a person, can dehumanize someone. And for that alone, I think reading this book is totally worth it. On top of that, these two books also have great plots that would pull you in, and also amazing, believable, likable, and real characters. Yeah, and if you can't tell, I really like these two books. So sadly, this fall term, I didn't really have time to read outside of the class. Um, so all the rest of these books I read in November or December in the panic and manic rush to finish my 2020 Goodreads challenge. So for me, that means I read a lot more smaller and shorter books, as well as a lot of classic English children's books that I didn't read growing up. So here are some children's books that I read, and I've ranked them according to how much I like the book. On top of these children's books, I also finished my yearly reread of 1984 this November. I also picked up a copy of The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up from the library because that's what's available. 
I didn't end up finding a huge value in reading the book, especially since I've already watched a Netflix series. In December, I also started and finished the current five books of the Wayward Children series. I find myself liking the first book the most, and after finishing each book, I always thought to myself that I wouldn't pick up the next one, but I ended up doing it anyways. The, the new book in the series is coming out next January, I think, and I'll probably pick that one up as well. And per Mariah's suggestion, I also read Lab Girl, which is an amazing memoir, and the writing in this book is also incredible. And some other books I finished this December, The Alice Network, which is an amazing work of historical fiction, as well as Asking for It and Alice in Wonderland. And recently I reread The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, which is such a great book, even after the third read-through. And I also picked up Brave New World for the first time. Which, don't get me wrong, it is a great book, but I thought I would love it more since I like 1984 so much. But comparing the two, I think I'd still prefer reading 1984. I feel like I can make an entire video comparing 1984 and Brave New World, but let's not start that here today. And those are the books that I read so far in 2020. I read 16 out of all of these books in December, so you can see I'm definitely in a rush trying to finish off that challenge on Goodreads. Thank you Syntax for recommending me some of these amazing books. It has been a good reading year. See you next week Syntax. Bye!